kick ass and chew bubble gum. And I am all out of gum. Hello, welcome back to A Boring Revolution, your number one news source for everything in regards to The Boring Company. Back to you today with possibly the most important episode I've ever done on this channel, in my personal opinion. I think this is a really important topic and is an absolute game changer if The Boring Company agree with my critical thinking on this particular issue. So, today... We're going to talk about concrete segments and continuous boring. That is what I'm going to link it into. But concrete segments are a critical part of the construction process for tunnels. Without concrete segments, there basically wouldn't be a tunnel. You just have a mound of earth sitting on your head. So what is the industry currently doing at this moment in time? And why do I think that is the wrong approach to building tunnels on a grand scale. So here is our TBM and here are some concrete segments that have been assembled. You can see our ring uh, our ring beams here. There's various ring beams. Uh, I count one, two, three, four, five ring beams here. So this picture is in the ring building stage of the tunnel building process. So how do I know that? Well, we have a rectangular concrete segment here and because there's only one that indicates to me that they are currently building a ring beam as you can see our hydraulic cylinders are extended at the maximum uh, extension they will be withdrawn and new segments installed those hydraulic cylinders cannot begin to thrust the TBM forward until the entire ring beam is assembled so for this particular tunnel we're talking in in and around uh, 12 to 14 concrete segments need to be installed in sequence you can't install three segments at the same time you have to install them individually which is the problem with sequential construction methods like this inside the TBM inside an enclosed space which also makes it extra difficult and once you've built your entire ring beam, you can then start the excavation process, which means you can then start spinning your cutter disc. You can start thrusting forward using your hydraulic jacks and you can start to remove uh, excavated material spoil using your screw conveyor, which is somewhere here inside the machine behind the shield. Whoops, let's get rid of that. So, as you can see, this process is not exactly very efficient, but the mining industry, the tunneling industry, like this process because they have uh, several decades of experience doing it. They know it works. They know it's safe. They can make money using this process, and that is the bottom line, really. But the Boeing Company is not about that. The Boeing Company is about increasing exponentially the rate of construction over many years so that we can build entire mass transit systems in under a year so here we are here's our traditional rectangular segment as you can see fairly basic reinforced concrete we can see our seal here as you can see of this one we've got our recess which is going to be uh, adapted for our seal later on this down here is our manipulator, which basically picks up the uh, segment, and then drops it into position where it is needed. And here we have our finished tunnel encompassing many, many concrete segments installed in this sequential ring beam uh, or segment ring format. Let's break it down. There are essentially three key processes at the moment if you go into uh, any TBM by any manufacturer anywhere in the, in the world. And it works like this. You have rock excavation. So you have your cutter head uh, rotating that is uh, crushing the rock 
at the surface of the excavation and then it is dropping that down into the excavation chamber where it is removed by our screw conveyor. On the back of that and at the same time you have thrusting, you have to be pushing that cutter head against the tunnel face in order to remove the maximum amount of spoil. So you have a thrusting process with hydraulic cylinders. However, hydraulic cylinders extend to a maximum uh, extension length. At that point, you then have to stop excavating and then begin the next process, uh, which is segment erection, which is via a manipulator, which essentially is a small mobile crane that sits inside the tunnel, inside the shield, and that moves our segments into the position where they are needed. I think there is a much better way to do this. I have done a lot of critical thinking over the last 12 months. I have come to the one conclusion that this is the only way feasible at this moment in time to build tunnels uh, essentially in a continuous manner rather than a sequential manner. And that involves a hexagonal concrete lining. Now, why am I so excited about using this particular system well as you can see here this gentleman here is stood on this segment here this segment can be um has been assembled whilst we are thrusting off our segments here so the, if these are hydraulic rams as you can see they can be thrusting at the same time, we are installing another hexagonal segment at the top. So you can do essentially two uh, tasks at the same time rather than doing them sequentially. And that saves a ton of time. It's much, much more efficient, an order of magnitude more efficient because all your processes can be continuing at the same time. You're only really limited by the supply of materials and the removal of spoil, which won't be a problem for the Boeing company because they have alternate systems that are much faster than the current systems being operated in the tunneling industry. Um, this system is brilliant. It has been used in the past, but it, it's never really reached its full potential. It, it's not really used that much because the traditional tunneling industry likes to work in the same way. It's always worked because you know, why change things when you're making a ton of money anyway? Here is an article I pulled off a PDF and it, it really does give some extremely uh, useful advantages to this particular system, including cost, which is obviously a very important element for the Boeing company and building vast uh, miles of mass transit. A significant economic advantage of this segment system is that ring construction only requires one type of segment. This leads to considerable cost savings in segment production compared to the use of rectangular block segments. Only the invert segment is often constructed with differences from the standard segment for operational reasons. Now it gives a disadvantage here, but as you can see, it, it, it stipulates an actual uh, diameter of 4.5 meters. I can tell you that the Boeing company is around 4.2 meters in external diameter. So that is well within the tolerances of this particular system. And you can use uh, four segments for the 4.2 meters. So it makes things so much easier. Um, another issue that I've been made aware of for this particular system is that they're not quite as, as watertight as the rectangular segments. However, that is down to the fact that the people that are installing these hexagonal segments don't have the uh, assembly experience in that system and they've been traditionally using rectangular. So uh, given um, much more experience in using this system, I anticipate that they'll be able to get them as watertight, if not more watertight than the uh, the current systems, the, hexagonal, the rectangular system. So, Here's a, here's a cross-section view of our um, segment. As you can see, the joints between segments overlap between different um, 
layers. And this enables you to assemble segments pretty much around the clock whilst also thrusting forward with your hydraulic cylinders. Here's a good example of that. So let's talk about the advantages and why I think this is by far the best system available at this current moment in time. Enables continuous mining, as I've just said. I think just by using the system, never mind using all the uh, additional um, technological advantages, advances that the Boeing company is going to make in terms of using uh, segment trucks and maybe using conveyors and, and maybe some other uh, additions in terms of uh, power improvements of the actual proof rock machine. I think just by using hexagonal segments, 250 meters is possible just by using this particular system. Simplify segment manufacturing because there's only one type of segment rather than three types of segments. Uh, that means the actual manufacturing of the segments is much simpler. If you have a problem with a particular segment just before you're about to assemble it, you could easily send it back and just use the next segment along the line. There's, there's no issue if you come across a keystone and it's damaged and then you have to uh, move segments back in the line then to get access to your keystone. All the segments are the same size, which simplifies uh, the manufacturing process. Results in a stiffer, more rigid tunnel because those joints are not lining up identically and because there essentially is no ring ring beam, it's all just individually uh, assembled segments lined up uh, offset from one another. That results in a much stiffer, more rigid tunnel. Large uniform segments equals cost savings. Uh, again, because the segments are longer um, and because there's there's probably going to be less segments inside the tunnel that results in considerable cost savings in addition to the simplified manufacturing process, uh, potentially in the region of 20 to 35% uh, savings uh, if you are manufacturing them on a very, very large scale. I must uh, uh, stipulate that you're only going to get those 20 to 35% savings if you are manufacturing, you know, uh, 30, 40, maybe even 50 segments per day every day seven days a week uh, works best in the four segment format but because there's that disadvantage with uh, using more than four segments it works in the advantage of the boring company because the tunnels are going to be much smaller diameter than typical rail tunnels so that also helps with the boring company now what is my summary there's a lot of thinking gone into this episode um I've been listening to what the Boeing company have been saying. They've not actually mentioned a change from rectangular segments, but I think this is just common sense. I, I don't really see another way of doing this, achieving continuous uh, boring. I think, and I can say this with a lot of confidence, the Boeing company will transition to hexagonal segments. All the benefits are there in terms of cost, time, and quality. That's your holy grail, time, cost, and quality. All that can be readily achieved with hexagonal segments. There are literally no disadvantages to using the system other than the fact that people don't have the experience of assembling them. But the Boeing company is going to specialize in this system. They will probably become the leading world experts in building tunnels using hexagonal segments in the next two years. Therefore, all the disadvantages disappear overnight. There is absolutely no reason whatsoever why the Boeing company wouldn't use this system. It's going to save them a ton of money. It's going to make building the tunnels faster. It's going to make the tunnels stiffer. And it's going to make the manufacturing process of the actual segments off-site, prefabricated, a lot easier. It, it, it's just an easy, easy decision for Steve Davis and Elon Musk. Now, do you agree if you don't agree, or even if you do agree, please drop it in the comments below. Tell me what you think. Do you think that this is the best system? Do you have an idea for another way of doing it? I don't think there is another way of doing it without increasing the complexity of the TBM you, you know, to an insane level. I think simplicity is the best way forward, certainly in construction processes. 
I can tell you now from you know the 15 years that I've spent in the construction industry, the simpler, uh, more cost-effective you can make a process, the better. And the more experience you have as a construction project manager of building something, the more cost-effective, the, the, the quicker you can do it. And for this particular uh, example, I think that is readily, readily uh, obvious. So please like and subscribe to the channel. Please join me on Discord, Twitter and Instagram. I've got a great Instagram channel, which I update every two or three weeks. I appreciate some feedback on those hexagonal segments. A big thank you to all my Patreons. Really appreciate your support. We have a new Patreon this uh, week. Thank you to Philip Decker. I know we spoke in the past and thank you so much for joining as a Patreon. Uh, that really is a brilliant, brilliant thing that you're doing by supporting this channel. Thank you to all my other Patreons as well who continue to help me grow this channel and spread great news about The Boring Company. Thank you so much, everyone. I really, really do appreciate it. And as always, don't be, please don't be boring. And I'll see you on the next one. Thank you so much. Goodbye.